All right, so um, this has been a video that I've been meaning to make, and I knew I was going to make it as soon as we got this particular project in. So, um, single single hum Stratocaster, and this is a really popular question: How do we wire up a single single hum guitar and make the right pot and cap selections, and make it as versatile as possible? So that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, we have a client from Washington State who ordered a perloid pickguard, an 8-ball humbucker to go in the bridge position, and two strat pickups to go in the neck and the middle position. Um, these pickups have not been wax potted yet, so we've got the wax heating up, and we're waiting for that to happen. So while we're waiting for that to happen, let's talk shielding. I don't always shield. In fact, I rarely do, but I figured for the sake of conversation and how to do it correctly, etc., I figured we would do a video and talk about what I use to shield and where I get it and all that kind of stuff. So first thing I'm going to do is just open up these holes really quick. Let's talk shielding methods. Now, a lot of people are going to use shielding paint. Um, I'm not a fan because I don't like anything else that makes a mess uh, or needs to be cleaned up after or any of that kind of stuff. I'm just not a fan. Um, is it effective? Yeah, if you do it right. One of the things you really have to do, I'll leave a link to some shielding paint in the description of the video um, for those of you that want to try it. Make sure that you stir it up. The metallic stuff that's in there will ball up in the bottom in like a big chunk and you'll have to like shove a paint stick in there and like break it up and then mix it if you don't do that the shielding won't work at all um, there is some argument and conversation about the longevity of shielding paint and how long it works so like it stops working after a period of time some people say that I have checked like Fender guitars that have shielding paint in them and they don't have any continuity left after a period of time. Just not really into that. So I don't use it. Like I said, I don't like the mess. What I use is copper foil, but not just any copper foil. Cheap Amazon copper foil. I do not buy it from Stumac. I do not buy it from any guitar specific place. I'll put a link to it in the description. It was literally I think $12 or something for this huge roll that I've been using forever and what it is is it's actually copper foil that people use to keep squirrels out of their garden or rodents out of their garden slugs no it's not it's not rodents it's slugs something to do with copper keeps you put this on like the borders of your I don't know I don't I'm not a gardener I'm, I don't know anything about it all I know is this is meant to keep slugs out of your garden the trick to it is, is the adhesive on the back side of it is conductive as well as the copper itself. That's very important and we're going to get to that in a minute. So let's go ahead and get some foil onto this thing. It looks a little wrinkly, but once you start smoothing it out, it looks pretty awesome. And I know that it's going to go off the edges a little bit, but that's okay. That's exactly what I want. And we just keep going across. Now, this is the important part. When you shield a guitar, you want continuity from one end of the shield all the way to the other with conductive foil and conductive glue, the glue is conductive, it makes it way easier because you don't have to solder it or anything. So let's just make this overlap just a touch. That's what we want, like that, so that it overlaps just a little bit.
and now that'll be conductive across there. So if we take our meter and we go from this piece to this piece, boom, we have conductivity even though we didn't solder it or anything. A lot of people will do this thing where they'll put like a drop of solder on the seam or something to make it uh, to make it conductive all the way across but there's really no need with this stuff and like I said this stuff is wicked cheap and smooth it on there and make it look nice even though no one's ever gonna see it I guess except the customer when they get it in the mail they want, you want your stuff to look nice so I'll just make sure that the edges are nice and pressed down so that I can trim it better. All right, we got it all foiled up. Now we get to go cut it all out. All right, so we've got the shielding all cut out. I'll cut out the knobs in a minute when I'm ready. Uh, as you may have noticed, it's possible to actually just run the knife around the edge and just cut off the edges but I like to trim it in from the edges just a little bit um, it makes it a little bit neater when it's on the guitar because you don't want any copper foiling sticking out from the edges um, so it's just a matter of practicality as well as because these have beveled edges on them I have in the past accidentally shaved a little edge off of the bevel by having the knife against it so for a couple of practical reasons. I just trim it a little bit in from the edge. It takes a couple more extra minutes, but it looks nice. And so now we're all shielded. Now on a Strat, um, on any shielding, we wanna make sure that this shielding is grounded. If it's not grounded to the output jack ground somehow, the main ground on the guitar, it shielding doesn't do anything if it's not grounded. So um, that's what we're gonna do. So we'll ground, um, we'll make sure that when we put the pots all in and the pickups in that the rim of the pot, the washer on the pot, um, makes sure that the shielding is grounded and we'll check that continuity. Um, if for some reason in some situations we need to run a wire to the shielding then we'll do that but most of the time you don't and that's it. Of course we don't have the guitar here so we're not going to shield the cavities in the guitar but the whole Faraday cage on a guitar is pointless anyway. There's anyway we won't get into that today. But um, next step is to get these pickups wax potted and get them in here and let's get them wired up. All right, so we've got all the components in the pick guard. Um, now we're going to talk about how we're going to make this setup kind of special for a single single hum deal. Uh, 0.022 capacitor is going to go on this one. 0.047 is going to go on this one, and then we're going to make these tone capac these tone circuits separate, and I'll show you how to do that over here on the switch, um, so that basically this pot, the bottom tone knob will only work for the bridge pickup, and then of course we're going to do a coil split on the bridge pickup, and I think this thing is going to be pretty killer. So let's go ahead and get to soldering. I'll probably time lapse the parts of the soldering that are normal and then the parts that are not normal we will uh, slow down and I'll show you exactly what I'm doing.
got it done. So this is a uh, single, single hum Strat. Uh, loaded pickguard from Dual and Talks Tone. If you want to know where to order it, there's a link below. Um, and we're going to talk about the setup. So one of the biggest questions that happens to ha in forums and everywhere is when you do a single, single hum setup, uh, oftentimes it's tough to get the tone controls correct because there's that age old question of which pots should I put with what pickups? Well, typically it's a 500 K pot with a humbucker and it's a 250 K pot with a single coil. The problem is, is that in a strat, it's not very, or most single, single hum setups, it's not very versatile. So what we've done here is created some versatility. So what we've done is we've taken these two um, Dylan Strat pickups and we've wired them to this tone control with a 0.022 cap. And what that does is it just makes it like a normal Strat, right? Then what we do is we take this uh, Dylan Tox Tone 8 ball humbucker, um, put it here, and then we make this a 0.047 cap. Now everything is on 500k pots because um, if you watch our videos and we talk about 250 versus 500k, uh, single pickups, single coil pickups typically have a lot more top end. And so a 250k pot is going to cut a lot of that top off. So I like to use 500 with most things and then just tune back down, you know, tone, use the tone control to to shave off that top end where I want it. It just gives me more flexibility. That's what I like to do. And in this situation, especially with a single single hum, it works awesome. The problem is most of the time on a Strat, uh, you don't have that regular bridge tone control here. So what we've done is, and I'll give you a close up of this, is we've now made this bottom tone control only for the bridge. And it's very easy to do. You can do it to any Strat. Basically all you do is where that bottom tone control hooks up to the switch that is coming in on the inside. So like, you know, towards the pots, uh, terminal number two on the switch, all you do is you take a jumper and you go from two to three. That's it. Boom. Now you have, um, this tone control is separate. So we put a 0.047 cap just on this tone control. So now it adjusts just this pickup by itself. Then this tone control has a 0.022 and it adjusts these two pickups by themselves. On top of that, because our eight ball and our center punch pickup split without volume dropping, we put a coil split on this pickup, and now you have like ultimate versatility in a single single hum strat setup. Really, 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 really fun stuff. So um, I just want to share that with you. I think it's really cool. I don't normally shield everything, but um, just for the purposes of shielding, our pickups are so quiet anyway, but just for the purposes of showing for the video, pretty awesome when you get our single single hum or any of our loaded pick guards um, all you have to do is weasel this through you know the little hole and solder your output jack on and then take your trem claw through the body and solder it to the back of a pot and boom you're in business and everything's working so it's pretty cool again check that out in the description below uh, the links to that um, I will also share a link to the shielding tape that I use because it's amazing. And um, if you want to hang out for our live Q&A on Thursday and ask any more questions about this, let me know. Uh, live Q&A, 5 o'clock Eastern Time, p.m. Uh, every Thursday. If you want to make sure that your question is guaranteed in that live, because sometimes it goes so fast, sometimes I can't keep up on everybody. Uh, go to patreon.com slash Dylan Talks Tone and you can ask your question there and I'll make sure that I, I prioritize those ones. Uh, the other thing too is our the fourth Sunday of every month we're doing a guitar workshop. I start, stopped calling them classes, just guitar workshop. This month, October 2020, fourth Sunday of the month, we're going to do um, a soldering workshop. So uh, I will put over there, well I'll put a link to this description of this video all the tools that I use for my soldering stuff. And then what we're also going to do, that way you can use the same stuff if you want. Um, it's not expensive. I do not use expensive tools for this. And um, that way you can bring a guitar, bring a soldering iron, bring a project, bring a problem. And we can talk about soldering and you can try some stuff and we can work together on it. And I'm going to do it on camera and it's going to be awesome. So 
check it out. And uh, until then, I guess we'll see you on Thursday at the live Q&A.